So how's everybody's week been? Oh, just trying to stay cool. It's hot. I was out shopping the other day, and I saw two old men sitting on a bench, and they were talking. And one of the guy looks at the other and goes, man, it is so hot. I saw my dog chasing the neighbor's cat, and they were both walking. <laughs> so, what was that Matthew Broderick movie? Africa Hot. It's Africa it's Hot. Africa it's Africa Hot, Africa yeah. Hot. <laughs> That's exactly right. So some interesting stuff this week has been going down. You've got Trump flying over to Asia, to Singapore, to uh, do the North Korea meeting at uh, what I'm feeling is China's behest. Um, I really think that's where this is coming from. I think that's who's really running this show is is America and China as opposed to North Korea. Didn't this get canceled or put off or something? Yeah, we've, point? we've yeah. gone up and down three right. or four times here. So, But yeah. it's it's on from what I understand. Hmm. Um, but having North Korea in the news has been really, uh, really interesting as of late. And um, just it kind of struck me as, as what what is this country? What do we really know about it? I mean, we, we hear all the time, you've got this leader over there. He's crazy. You know, he's a nut job. I kind of wanted but it's to... it's a bloodline. It is. It is. And that's exactly where you start at with right. this country. Um but it's really not. There's a method to the madness in his insanity. The guy's not uh, irrational. Let's say, while it might be evil and manipulative and 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 just the worst form of of humanity that you can imagine, there's a method to the guy's madness of why he does what he does. I found it interesting looking at the country, looking at the history, looking at the people, um, and it really spun me into this information control looking at how information control really shaped how this country ended up in the spot that it was in um you know you started off with the with the korean war which was really china versus the u.s mm-hmm. um you know that if it would have just been u.s versus north korea that war would have been over with in short order so China's always used North Korea as this pawn. It's always been, it's always been their chess piece on the board to block things. With. Sure, I can see that. Um, and in the same, to to a degree, we've used South Korea, but South Korea has been a willing participant. They they wanted freedom. They they've gotten everything that they've wanted out of this deal. So yeah. I don't feel bad for South Korea. Yeah, they've been large. the good neighbor, the good ally. They I really mean, have. At least it seems that way to me, anyway, from all the stuff I've seen. They have. Um, it's 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 an interesting it's an interesting relationship. It's been tenuous at times, but generally it's a it's a very cooperative. They're helping us. We're helping them. Symbiotic relationship. So from from the intel community, you, you kind of got to wonder because we're looking. You know, you look at a collection of information that's put out there, right? And you have you have the civilian intel community, and then you have the military intel community, and it's it's kind of funny because you you start reading these stories, and I see a pattern of they make the story out to what they want it to be. Right. You know, they kind of want you, they're doing kind of what he's doing in a way. Right. With the information. If we're going to, you know, if we're going down the information path, it's like, okay, if we want to gear up for war, we're going to make him seem like a really bad guy. Right, right. The humanitarian, all the rights that he violates. Which he is. He yeah. is a bad guy. Right. Now, now, how much of that affects you in reality is right. what is that equal to? You know what I mean? Sure. He's doing this to his own people. And it depends on how much you want to be involved in other people's affairs. Right. I mean, now, would, it, would it be fair to say that, because I still think at some point, everybody's a product of the environment that they grew up in. So sure. I, I wouldn't necessarily say that he has any original thoughts on how he punishes people. He just does things the way that he saw his father do things. The way his Oh, I think he's a student. Yeah, yeah, I think he's a student at that to a large degree. If it's effective, sure. And he's probably going to go, I think we were talking earlier about the path of least resistance. Right. Whatever works the fastest and most effectively. Sure. That's what he's going to go with, yeah. So looking at it, we've gone from, you had the Korean War. It went from a hot war to a cold war, which is a war. When you really start looking at the difference between the two, you're shooting bullets in one, and then you're using information as your weapon in the other. So this has turned into, since the the late 50s, this has turned into an information war is what we have here. Um, And it's been mostly him playing defense of keeping information out of North Korea and us playing the offense, trying to get that information in there, whether it's propaganda, whether it's... Yeah, he's, he's he's fighting destabilization. Exactly. He doesn't want you know people uh, or his people being influenced by other superpowers that, for some reason, have some business and 
in North Korea. So yeah, if he can keep that information out through any means necessary, and or you know, just by fear alone. Well, he can't show he can't show weakness of any kind, right? And that's that's the problem. And he's I mean, and he's, if I remember right. Anybody that's him or anybody who's in that seat of power is viewed in their culture. It's like a divine. It is divinity. It's, it's, it's a, almost yeah. like Japan yeah. Yeah, with it the is. emperor. It's real sure. close to that. Right. Well, I thought was funny was Dennis Rodman. Yeah. I mean, you know, you, when you look at the pop culture that they seek... Because they really do like Western pop culture, and it's one they, of those things that you he can't, likes Western movies. That's yeah. that's pretty interesting. He's yeah. a big Western movie fan, right? So you know, you look at that, and then you see Dennis Rodman going over there. Which honestly, was it a publicity stunt for Rodman? I don't know. Did any good come out of it? I don't think so. You know, it's like Rodman looked like a typical looked like Rodman an ass, right? right. And then you know, yeah. Kim Jong Il got to got to say to the to, to the surrounding community, "Hey, look, I had a, a Western basketball star in here." Well, so right. well, I guess where I'm going because there's a lot of good information to come on that, but I see Rodman as a uh, he was a reality TV star, right? I think they look looked at Trump initially as a reality TV star. That's interesting. I hadn't thought about that take at all. You know, because I'm thinking of along the lines of what culture, what what does America use to influence more countries? They use music and TV. Yeah, we export our yeah. culture. Mm-hmm. We export our culture. And so I'm thinking that, because um, we had eight years of Obama, and we saw how that wet noodle played. It was really bad for us over there. And, and Kim Jong-il Il felt like he can push people around. Right, and he can get up and boast, and Obama would acquiesce and not do anything. When he had that for about four yeah. or five presidents, he really did have yeah. that. I mean, that was what people wanted to shove him off the side. That was a that was the kid in the room that nobody wanted to look at. Right, he was over there throwing his little temper tantrum. Sure, and nobody wanted to deal with him. They just put him off and put him off and put him off. And now we're dealing with a nuclear Korea. Sure, and then it, then it come along Trump. Exactly, you know, along comes Trump, and he and you know, I, I think I think Trump did a great job of breaking that pattern. Oh, he, absolutely! He clearly, he clearly drew the line. I think he knew. Yeah. The, Trump showed leadership in the fact of he knew where to go to get the the squeaky wheel gets the kick. Right? Mm-hmm. He knew to go where he knew to go to China. Right. That's really where. That's where this all comes from. If you mm-hmm. want to look at really who runs North Korea, mm-hmm. it's China, regardless of right. Kim Jong Il or not. China could end him tomorrow, and Kim Jong Il knows that. Mm-hmm. Um, China obviously knows that. And I think Trump finally said, enough is enough. Yeah. Let me go to the source. Let me get this under control because I'm sick of dealing with this. Um, but it's interesting. Something that you pointed out was the Western culture and how right. we export that. If you look, go back to Russia, right before Russia destabilized. Um you can control people as long as you have food in their bellies, okay? I can come in and tell you I'm Jesus, and as long as I've, you've got your kids are eating and everything's kind of normal and you're living this standard of life, then they'll believe that. People will swallow that. Whether they really believe it or not, it doesn't matter. Well, they let you exist. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. They say, okay, I'll go along with that as long yeah. as I can maintain, right? Yeah. So when people start starving, you know, you can't feed their kids. You've got soldiers that, that are not eating. On the northern border, uh, you've got definitely people starving. They, they, they actually lost 10% of their people at one point to starvation, uh, which is a fairly high number for starvation. Yeah, especially a country that size. Yeah. So when you start having that, and then you, you've got... So this happened in Russia. You, you, you had the, 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 the quality of life go down over in Russia in the 90s. They were running out of money. So you, you had... Western television getting in there, and people are saying the maids have it better in the U.S. because they were seeing soap operas, and they're saying, "Man, the maids have it better than we do." Well, even that's th- why you saw the population in Russia turn like they did. Uh, even yeah. in that article that we referenced to from the Atlantic, you had the when you had North Korean uh, dissidents who who made it over into South Korea, and they saw the South Korean poor or hell even the Chinese poor right even those people they had their dogs they, had meat they, even though even the the the, right. the poor people lived a better life than the poor people of North or really any North Korean right um, so that was I mean that was pretty telling yeah they would have they would have dissidents go across the border into China because they have family I mean you've got family on both sides of the border there and they would have family go over and look and the, the dog would have meat 
Mm-hmm. I don't tell them what kind of meat it was. Probably rat meat or whatever. Right. Those people haven't seen meat in years. They don't know what it is. And they're like, damn, the dog's eating better than we are. Right. So when you have this, this is when destabilization starts. This is when you're most likely to lose control of this type of, of dictatorship that's, that's existed for it's almost 60 years now. 60, 70, going on 70 years, actually. So... It's interesting from that perspective is of looking at him now and saying, okay, what is the end game here? You know what I'm saying? You've had all this control. You have, you've had this tight lock. For a long time, they, they, they weren't allowed radios. The only radio you could have, you couldn't have an open radio. You could have a radio that was government issued, which had a, a frequency set. It had a volume control on it. And that's all you could listen to that came in over there. Yeah, no... No freestanding, no freestanding radios besides right. the one that was state supported. Tell, tell, there are some television stations. Television was strictly state TV. Um, so, getting back to the kind of this information war thing, what we would try to do, and what South Korea would try to do, is pump signals in, and then they would try to get the message into these people. Hey, look at look at how we live on the outside. You people are suffering for no reason right and they were doing it through shortwave radio they were they were doing it through shortwave radio and now they've actually got it it's interesting they've actually got a um a gorilla uh, news agency that's operating inside Mm -hmm. it's it's the nk daily is what they call it Uh and they are actually operating inside of north korea they have reporters yeah this is the i read where actual uh north korean intelligence Officers will actually go to these people looking or, or, for uh, South Korean, South Korean, or South Korean. Yes, will go to these North Korean reporters mm-hmm. and, gra- be, and gather intel. Yeah, to, coming out to validate there. stuff. Wow. So really, really, really interesting. Like I said, it's been a control burn for getting information in and preventing information. That's been that's been the offense defense in this whole thing, and he's been playing defense for the most part. Mm-hmm. Um, he has no choice. I mean, you're surrounded. When 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 you control the state, you're going to be on constant defense with that. There's no. I mean, you can put out you can put out your own propaganda, but like I said, people aren't going to believe that so long when you're starving. I mean, well, I think that at some point, when you start recognizing what your capabilities are, as technology gets more and more advanced, it begins it begins to trump everything that you think is powerful enough to restrict entering your country at sure. some point and when people begin to recognize something outside of their borders that they want to have there now that you as the leader were fighting alone to keep this stuff out you know through your minions or whatever now you have the people that you're governing who now are, are helping this information that you're restricting to get into the country so it's you're lose it's he's losing ground right with trying to, to 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 fight technology go ahead Ken. no i was just thinking so so with that being known he kind of knows now he's got a shelf life that's what yes I think. so that's he's what I think. so he's right at the he's sitting there going holy crap so if i'm gonna keep a seat at the table i gotta play this just right right mm-hmm. so if i go to the u.s okay yep and continue to do what i'm doing with the u.s well, that's to me. That's what all the missile firing was about, right? So I'm going to get China involved because China's not going to let the U.S. come in and do right what the U.S. says they're going to do, right? So you know, it's an interesting way of getting somebody to come to the table because saving face is a huge thing in that culture. Yes, sure it, it is. is. You know, and actually, it is actually in world leadership, saving face is a big thing. So it's kind of interesting because you know, for me. I'll be honest with you. I'd never given any of this a second chance. You know how I feel about sure. it. Sure. <laughs> I was like, burn them all. Yeah, I was God like, sort them out. Well, yeah, I was like, the people if they're if if they're if they're too weak minded to not fight against that regime, well, that's why they're conquered. You know, so that's why I look at that's why I look at it that way. Now, it's not the right way. I yeah. get that. It's not global. I get that as well. But um, I, I I do look at it that way. It's been systematic. Why should we do it? Why I agree with we you. Do it? I, no, I agree, and it's yeah. been systematic how those people have been picked apart. Right. You know, you you did have a proud culture at one point, and then sure. it's steadily over. Like I said, the last sixty years, it's just been degraded. Well, to, Korea was a hellish place for anybody that fought in that war. Oh yeah. Right. I mean, I mean, my God, that was you know a lot of people they 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 talk about Vietnam, but those guys at the Chosin Reservoir. I mean, yeah. I have actually know a couple guys that are. 
they have life affecting detriment from that from that whole thing being yeah. POWs. And I can tell you uh, that was that was a brutal place. Uh, just just having watched footage, I, the, there was a term coined called "fire and ice." That yeah. was that was the that was your two options there. You were right. either freezing to death, right. or you were just it was it was awful. You were on fire in the middle of a fight. I mean, right. it was it was that was your two options there. Um, Korean War was definitely one of the most hellish battlefields probably ever. I would think. ever fought. Yeah, I would in think. a conventional war for sure. So 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 this guy now moving forward. So we have this meeting happening when on the twelfth. I believe it is on the tour. You know, and I, and I sit there, and you know, and I I know there's a lot of technology information that you, that you did homework on, and what I was really, you know, I was interested in the fact that how do you live in a modern society where you have vehicles and housing and not have entertainment? Right. Right. I mean, seriously, I guess that's how we are in the United States. We just look at it that way. So there's public sponsored television there. Right. You know, but does every house have a television, or does it? Not every house has. So you gather to watch TV. Uh, That would be my guess, or movie theaters. I know that they promote propaganda on their their television. It's pretty much when you watch it, you're either getting state sponsored news or state sponsored propaganda. The the leader did this. This is the history. I know they they're very proud on their history, so a lot of the state covers their version of history. Right. Um. Because I, I just look at it, it's hard. You know, I look at it, and it's, you can't really compare it to Germany, where you have East and West Germany. You really can't. No, it's not. It's it's way different. Than yeah, that. it's completely different. Now, I, when you look at the way that they've controlled things, uh-huh. so you do see where they've sort of, I'm not really slipped back, but things that they used to care very much about, now uh-huh. they just sort of turn a blind eye to. Right. So let's just say that that DVD player that that used to be restricted nowadays they'll go eh, we'll just kind of look the other way we just won't talk about it or if like even computers well and a lot of that a lot of that comes through because of the famine of the 90s yes and the continuation of the famine border guards are bribed all the time yeah but like i said when your guards aren't eating that's yeah. when you really have a problem and you lose control right and he knows this i think that's why we're in the that's why we're at the table now i think he rushed this nuclear program he had to have this to be able to keep him and the elite in power, mm-hmm. he had to. I, I think what he's done, like I said, a lot of guy, a lot of people call this guy crazy. He is. He's evil. I'm gonna, I'm gonna straight up tell you that. But there's methods to what he's doing. He's smart to a degree that I think he did what he did because he knew what was coming. When 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 he started to lose control of the information, when when your when your guards are able to be bribed, uh-huh. yeah, to because they can't eat, then. Right. You're, you've lost control at that point. You well, can no longer control that flow. And if you let it get too far, that populace will rise up and you'll be dead in a day. Well, the guards will kill you. Either Basically, the guards will kill yeah, you, the, the guards people will kill, kill, kill you. you. One of the two. Just like in the Roman Empire. I mean, that's what's going to happen. Sure. You know, my concern also, too, with this whole nuclear thing is another Chernobyl. Yeah. Because didn't they have a few nuclear accidents over there? Well, that he were, melted a hole yeah. in the earth that basically collapsed on itself. Yeah, so, so you kind of got to wonder, you know, what, what the global community concern is about that because i would think that we don't need another pripyat ukraine right. like you know where this big city where everybody start dying and you can't live it yeah. anymore what's going to happen over there i mean that's not the biggest real estate in the in, in no the it's Asian a pretty realm, confined yeah. area i mean it's not that yeah. big now i think that uh you know based on how pretty tame the interactions have been according to re- news reports uh-huh. Like okay, you don't you don't see any rants coming out that you know he's he's saber rattling right and 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 most of the talks that have been going on have been hey they've been somewhat pleasant mm-hmm. so best case scenario would be okay let's say that there is going to be somewhat of a unification mm-hmm. of the Koreas there is going to be and a play uh, a, a point where it becomes a modern North Korea. There is going to be a time when there's a chair at the union uh, at the uh, UN at the UN for the for the North Koreans to sit down, and then all of a sudden you have all this economic opportunity that may be available to them. That now, if if he or any of his you know his his advisors are able to convey that kind of a long term dream to the the citizenry and the citizenry is looking at that going oh my god you know he's a reformer yeah yeah. now that in my mind i'm not saying that it won't happen but i would say that was 
one hell that's of a That's his intent. I think that's his intent. That's one hell of a sale. Yeah. It's, it's to be able to get everybody on board to that. That's funny because when you start looking at like the feudal Japan, yeah, look yes. at look at how that came down right after the Civil War, where the you had the the last empire, and you know you had a child king or leader or whatever yeah. it is, and they just kind of took the family out. Yeah, the family just went away. Well, they, they, they decentralized him from the government. Right. It's kind of like if you go, you can even go back to like the Magna Carta and how mm-hmm. they how they separated the really separated the royalty right. from what the parliament was, and you you've had that divide drive sure. itself apart. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's kind of interesting. I mean, I, like it's been a big history lesson for me because I'll be honest with you, I don't give that a second thought. Every time I see it on TV, I'm like, I'll just nuke him. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, just get it done. It, you know, I get that, but yeah. to a degree, what 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 intrigues me about it is is the whole Asian politics of it mm-hmm. and who's driving it. Again, I go back to. Mm-hmm. Really, this is a contest of wills between the U.S. and China. Right. That's really what we're dealing with on the over on the upside of this. Um, but to to really touch on what you were saying, I think you I, I think you hit it on the head. What he's trying to do is he wants to make that transition. Right. He wants to take him. What I see happening is this is this is how he does it in my mind. One, you'll never see a North and South Korea united. Right. I don't think that's going to happen. Right. Neither side wants that, so I don't ever see those two reuniting as a i'm not saying that i'm I, I i mean i could be wrong but i just don't see that as the best interest of, of either china or the u.s well i mean west and east germany didn't didn't come right back together right all, uh, it right didn't away. now you might have say like i said you might make this transition and then 20 years down the road sure. it happens i could see it possibly then but it's not going to happen and you're not going to wake up tomorrow and say holy no, crap no, there's no, one no, korea nothing ever well anywhere that, where we've tried that as a as a world community i hate saying that because i just hate that thought but as a world community when when russia fell cold war was yeah. over look how long that you had holdouts you did so your holdouts go underground well, and all what, they that's do is the that's law. the easiest yeah. mental image to put it in i see yeah. what you're saying no that is the that is the way to look at it yeah. for the world community yeah and what you do is you you sit there and you you now undermine the new direction right so because you you continually will have that i mean and that's just human nature somebody's been so devoted to communism their entire life yeah Mm -hmm. and when you realize how restricting communism is it outdates itself it's apparent how it outdates itself right and then but then do you want to concede to the western culture because all the good things that people see from western culture they forget there's a lot of corruption that goes with it yeah yeah you know and there's a lot of things in our culture that just but you know it seems like we give up we give up freedoms even in our in our republic. We're we, giving up freedoms now. We do. It, it seems like corruption exists in any type of, of regimented government that you have out there, right. or any type of state government. Well, it, what, I, what I think is funny is when you brought up the so, the, the Soviet, mm-hmm. you know, fall of the Soviet Union mm-hmm. was when that all happened. You know, you had suddenly you had um, Soviet soldiers that became um, they became like under. Or, uh, uh, organized crime sure oh yeah up. but so uh, mm-hmm. to to that i mean they got that you had the soviet um crime syndicate kind of bubble to the surface and then um the other thing was um god damn it the <laughs> okay so what i wanted to say was right now north korea when you look at at 196 countries they're dead fucking last when it comes to sure. just freedom of press. Yeah. yeah. So that that is equivalent to this is something Ken and I talked about the other the other day is you have this algorithm that looks at looks at cities mm-hmm. and that's how you determine whether they're the fattest fucking city in the in the world. Right. Right now or in the United States. Right now uh, North Korea doesn't want to be the doesn't want to be the stupid kid in the world now. He's so, tired of that. And how he spins this to me this is how he maintains power. He gets in there and he says, and they've already kind of alluded to this to some degree, in my opinion. Well, there was these generals that were behind the scene that were working with the military that really forced my hand and made me be this way. I had to follow. And they've already pointed out, I, the guy's name escapes me off the top of him, off the top of my head, but he's already in trouble for war crimes. He's he he he's blown up a, a, a South Korean ship. Oh wow! Uh, wow. Yeah, he's <laughs> he's shot people. I mean, he's he's basically the Goebbels to Kim Jong Il. Is oh, what this wow. guy is. Wow! And it was a general, and they've already said they've already kind of started putting this guy out there and saying, well, he was a bad guy, but he's he's one of the negotiating partners. 
And I guarantee partners. And He's I guarantee the goat. he is. I yeah. guarantee they're gonna find about ten of those guys and say, yeah. Here they are, this was the problem, this is why and they'll be they'll believe it. As long as as long as they know they're gonna get rice and beef tomorrow, they will sure execute them. Let's just keep going. Yeah, so I'm I'm sitting there and I'm thinking like so Kim Jong il. When you look at him and he say he's successful in some form or fashion of negotiating some this, kind this of idea, yeah, this idea that's going on. How long will they allow him to stay in there, though? Because there's a lot of bad blood there. Yeah, and I mean, it, it's it, it's hard for even a guy that steals cars that does ten years and gets out, and you just don't leave, you just don't let your car well, see, keys he's thinking, around him. He's got to you know? be thinking, I've got to do this first, and then I'll yeah. tackle that problem next. Oh, I think so, but I think I, his how he does it, I don't know. Now we're we're past yeah. we're four chess moves past where no, I need to be. Sure, yeah, like well, so. What I can't okay the, the best thing to happen in North Korea when it comes to governing themselves mm-hmm. will be allowing the vote. So sure. so I was in Afghan- democracy yes. of some kind. Yeah. So I, so I was in Afghanistan when they when they when the whole voting mm-hmm. thing happened, and that was like a really volatile time. And I'm I'm trying to remember what the what what the body was that you basically you have to give the hosting government has to give permission to allow some like a democratic body to come in to observe their, sure. their their elections to make sure that hey everything worked out according to the metric of sure. how mm-hmm. how democracy is supposed to work. We've seen that in all and, kinds of elections. So they did it in Iraq. Does as well. the UN try to do that? I I, I think the UN is is involved. Because I really it may struggle be with that. I struggle with that idea because it's U.S. Yeah. and China bringing this thing to fruition. If, if you're asking, UN. yes, the UN is who monitors that. Yeah. They have UN yeah. sanctioned. I forget what they call the other. They're basically monitors. They're UN sanctioned monitors that come in and yeah. watch the election. Well, what's, see, I'm not a fan see, of that. See, I, there's a little bit of hypocrisy there. Yes. How I look at it is you want to make sure that some country is democratic, and we're going to get off track here. Uh huh. But <laughs> is you, you want a country to add a democratic component to elect their leaders. Oh, but by the way, we're also going to tell you that, you know, when you do this, you're also not allowed to have firearms. Well, wait a minute. Right. I, I thought you were about a democracy here. Well, they have right. a constitution. North Korea yes. has a constitution. That's interesting. But, what I'm, yeah. but it, at the top of the constitution is Kim Jong-il and his family yes. are the supreme leaders, and there are no others. But that I'm, is right. at the top. That's number one. What I'm talking one. about is an action that's sponsored by I the UN. A global is, community. Yeah. And that's what I meant by, you know, we're deviating from... The top well, is, sort but. of, sort of. I mean, you know, so it's it's obvious that they didn't have firearms anyway because right. they're they're conquered and but ran by this. That's guy. the irony of, yeah. of the UN is we, you know we're sure. about being d- democratic, right. But yet we're going to tell you what you can and cannot do. Well, it gives them the opportunity to set the new global model. Yes, you know, I mean, seriously, well, if yeah. Gonna, if you're going to hit a reset button, it, what I thought was interesting though was the sneak of information. This is the one thing I don't want to walk away and not talk about. Because you were telling me about how they get outdated technology over there. Yeah. They, they do. It's interesting. That so, was kind of cool. So when everybody was like tossing a, VCRs in the 90s. And right? the late 90s. Sale. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> in the late 90s, VCRs were nobody wanted. They were in the, they were in the dumpster bin, right? Mm-hmm. So they started sneaking VCRs over the border. That became a hot commodity into North Korea. And then videotape started to pick up. Computers, for the most part, you can have a computer, but it has to be state registered. Yeah. And the state looks at it, and the state puts their software on it. So you okay. can have a computer, but what what's really going on? They have a pirated Microsoft uh, license. Mm-hmm. It's basically it's Microsoft, but it's a pirated deal that they put together. And I'm sure it's full of spyware that right. sends information back. So the the way that they decided to get information was on VCR tapes. They would send videos over. And that's how this underground started. That's when the, that's when people started saying, that's "Wait bizarre. a minute." Well, and how they started coming over the border with them was that was the great famine of the 90s. So it was easy to bribe guards at the border right. to get this technology in. That's why I go back to talking about this is how the society falls when you don't feed your people. Yeah. I mean, something almost like 85 or 90% of the budget goes to military over there. That is not a made up number. Mm -hmm. Every dime that that guy's ever been given goes into military hardware. So you've got these people starting starving. So in comes the, the, the influx of this VCR and people are watching tapes and like, wait a minute, we're getting to shaft here. So the next thing to go were DVD players. People went away from DVD players in the in their early 2000s, mid-2000s. 
That was the next big thing. Let's get DVDs. You can get more information in on a DVD. DVDs held more information. You could watch longer movies. You could get more information in about the outside world. Then memory sticks started up. People find, figured out how to get hacked computers in over there and memory sticks. And now memory sticks are the, the latest rage. If you've got a memory wow. stick, you're almost like a broadcast station over there. Yeah. That's crazy. It, oh, it's yeah, bizarre. The, one of the technologies I read that they did on the, the memory stick, which I thought was genius, was when you put it into a, when you put it into a computer... Um, typically, the you know the computer will read it, and it'll basically give you a status mm-hmm. of what you just inserted. And what this thing would do is, if you if this was one of these pirated memory st- memory sticks, it would basically show up as I'm empty. I got nothing. I got mm-hmm. nothing going on here. Right. And so you know, a guard would take this this memory stick and hand it back to whoever. And okay, going on on about your business. What some hacker did was they buried the program in some icon that was in the memory stick. So once the people were safely away from, you know, the the, the, the prying eyes, they would put it on their computer at, at you know, whatever. And I'm sure they're using a, probably a, a computer that wasn't registered. Right. And they would click on this icon and suddenly the icon would unbox the software and the files that these people were interested That's amazing. in. So <laughs> it, it, it was so it, it was genius how they ghosted this information. It, it is, and it comes down to this is how this is. It's 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 interesting to watch this type of warfare take place. We are watching the warfare of information take over this country. We can't really see it. I mean, we can, we get bits and pieces of it from people reporting out of there, mm-hmm. but it's really interesting watching information take this regime down to the level that it's been taken down to. 